awakening. I want to bring in retired FBI Special Agent Bobby Chacon. Um, he's in Palm Springs. Uh, Bobby, I thought of you today when Jessica Schneider, our CNN correspondent in D.C., um, had an inside scoop from an FBI source saying that this is sort of a game changer. Um, and, and this was the word uh, that she used. Structural overwatches are going to be something that they key in on and focus in on going forward. And that counter snipers might now be our new normal. Can you explain all that for us? Sure. So this, I mean, if you follow it all the way back, you're going back to venue design. And, and when you're building new venues, um, you have to start taking these things into account. Um, counter sniper teams, we've used them at the Olympics for a number of years back in 2002 when I was assigned to the Salt Lake City Olympics and I did security there. Um, we had several downtown hotels overlooking um, Olympic Metal Plaza, which was a large venue downtown that had a 20,000 uh, person concert venue every night. We had counter sniper teams that were positioned to, if a threat was coming out from any of those windows, they would be able to spot it and, and address it. So um, you're talking about, you know, that's a pretty uh, large uh, military presence that comes with it, a secret service and, and some experts that do that. But, you know, uh, applying that down to a, a local concert and a temporary venue, you know, if, if we're going to do that and cause those people to have those kind of requirements, uh, you know, it might be a burden, but it's not something to think about. But those are the th kind of things that are in place at events like the Olympics that I'm familiar with. And I did the Olympics in 2004 in Athens, Greece as well. And the Greeks also had counter, counter sniper teams. Secret right. Service and some of the military units have expert counter sniper teams. For example, if you had a counter sniper team perched within that concert venue Sunday night, as soon as they would have seen the, where the shots were coming from, they might have been able to address it. Now think of what you're talking about. You're talking about a, a, a good guy sniper now aiming into the Mandalay Bay and taking a shot. That's a very difficult thing. It's not a it's not an, uh, a a simple prospect to to propose. It's 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 a very serious thing, and to do that, it may be something that wants to be considered. We want to consider, but it's it's a very drastic step uh, to take. I'll bet. I'll bet. And you know what, Bobby, if you could stay with us after the break, I want to ask you something very specific because I started to think about, you know, Times Square, New Year's Eve, all those buildings around. Then I also thought about those sports venues, like where the Orioles play and where the Blue Jays play. And there are hotel rooms everywhere. You can check in and watch that game and see all those sitting ducks because that's what a lot of those victims said they felt like when they got out of that concert bowl, sitting ducks. So Bobby, when we come back, I wanna ask you about that. We're also learning a whole lot more about Stephen Paddock and the arsenal, the sheer arsenal of weapons that he had amassed. Just ahead, a look at some of the weapons that he had. Bring in Bobby Chacon back if I can. Um, the you know retired FBI special agent Bobby Chacon, I asked you before the break about all those places um, where we wouldn't even think twice about all these surrounding hotel rooms, but big venues. And I'm just going to list off a few if you just give me a moment. Dover Downs in Delaware, if you go there, you can overlook uh, all of the horse racing and NASCAR events if you're in the surrounding hotel rooms. Um, if you're at the Toronto Marriott at City Centre, your hotel room will give you a bird's eye view of the Blue Jays and all the people who attend those games as well. Um, if you're at the Hilton in Baltimore, same story. You can watch the Baltimore Aerials and all the fans right from your window. The new Omni in Atlanta has a view uh, when it's ready to go of the Braves. So when those games are in play, perfect view of all those potential victims. Uh, the Hyatt Regency, uh, the rooms um, in Orlando there face the airport. They actually have a bird's eye view of the security check-in point, which to me is, is just sort of bizarre. And then of course, there's the, the old standard I think about every year at New Year's Eve, and that's Times Square. Times Square surrounded by thousands of windows, and there are a million plus people down below. What are we to make about this, uh, Bobby? What are we now to, to think of when we're talking about those structural <coughs> overhangs, or overwatches? Is, is, you know, fighting fire with fire, counter snipers, the only answer here? I mean, the, the overriding thought is going to be there's only so much we can do, and you're not going to be able to be 100%. I was an FBI agent assigned to New York City for many years. I'm, I'm from New York, and I used to go to Times Square. And in fact, 
at the millennial in 1999 I was assigned to Times Square uh, the security detail in Times Square for the changing of the millennium um, and th that was always a concern for us but there's only so much you can do did we have people on the rooftops yes but shooting out of a window this is going to I don't know if it's going to change the game because there's only so much we can change but it's going to change the thought process I've stayed in the Marriott at, in Toronto and watched the game out my window we have the same situation here, down here in San Diego um, a couple of decades ago a lot of cities started building stadiums in their downtown areas as a way to bring life back to certain downtown areas that were downtrodden for years and that was a way to bring jobs and bring people back to their downtown areas but also in those downtown areas you have hotels and you have um, large office buildings that overlook these venues so it's going to be impossible to kind of make those things hundred percent um, safe and like you said how many airports have hotels attached to the airport many of them which overlook the runway if a person like this had that kind of weaponry how hard would it be to to shoot out the window at a plane and take down a plane full of people so you know these are th things that are going to have to be thought about um, whether or not you can use you know glass that that's not breakable you know it's it's there's a lot to think about here but but you have to start with it you're not going to be able to make everything 100 percent safe now Bobby Chacon thank you for that the